Hello and welcome to Smile and Spread a Little Joy. I'm Deborah, the Smile Lady, and you know what Smile is. You saw it, right? Support, motivate, invest, love, and educate. Everyone born was born to smile. Now, what they do with it is all up to them. And every guest on this show that sits in this hot seat and even behind the cameras, I prefer them to smile because that energy just kind of like, ooh. So today, I'm not even going to tell you. She's going to tell you who she is because I just really met her and she has this gift and I want her to tell you what she's about and what makes her smile. Now, for those of you tuning in the first for the first time, your smile is what you love doing so much you would do it even if you did not get paid. And you've been doing it ever since you were about five or six years old. Now it doesn't have to be one area. You could be a doctor and a dancer. You could be an attorney and a construction worker. You know, but your gift you're born with and it's up to the people responsible for you to nurture that gift. So what I do on the SMILE program is bring on mentors and role models to show people how they got their smile or how they tapped into their smile. So without any further ado, before I get into, boop, because a lot of people think it's a country, believe it or not, today. There's 54 countries in the continent of Africa. We'll get to that later. But anyway, my little African queen, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Happy to be here. Yes, it is. You're just so beautiful. Thank you so much. And you know, we drank the Kool-Aid, you know, back in the day mm. where we were ugly, we were slaves, we were this, we were that. Mm. But I have you to know, people, you are beautiful just the way you are. And God did not make any mistakes. A skunk isn't even a mistake. Ha. Huh. I'm going to tell you what the skunk is, and all of us could be a little skunkier than this. Come on, a skunk at least sprays you when they're defending or protecting, but we just get skunky just for nothing. So at least, I wonder who's the most intelligent creature. Okay, skunk, you can go later. Okay, so with it, I want you to, number one, I want you to look into your camera and give your name and what makes you smile. What is it you love doing so much you would do it even if you didn't get paid? Hi, my name is Hania Tahira. What I would do or what makes me smile even if I'm not getting paid for it is teaching and I love performing. Uh, whether it be on the stage, whether it be you know on the runway, because I'm also a model as well. I enjoy interacting with people. I enjoy sharing my gift and my light. But uh, one thing that I have been doing most recently is teaching. So that's definitely something that makes me smile. Now, how long have you been doing that? Teaching or dancing? Just, just like little. Did you choreograph talent shows when you were five and six, or you know, go back as far as you can remember? You working in your gift. I began dancing at five. I went to Blackwell's Dance Academy. Uh, after that, I kind of just take, took a hiatus. Uh, at 14 or 15, I went to Lula Washington Dance Theater, and that's where most of my training came from. I joined her company at 16. I've been touring and traveling. Um, I've also I've been privileged to work with George Faison, who choreographed The Wiz on Broadway. Wow. Yeah, he's, he's an amazing person to work with. I, I worked, um, I performed at the Apollo when he choreographed. It was something for, I think it was Chester Whitmore did something okay. it was a few years ago. I worked with Rennie Harris, Mr. Donald, the late Mr. Donald McHale. So my dance experience has been very broad and very- Another Jameson, um, huh? I, I am honored I will receive that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you ever do the chocolate nutcracker? I did do the chocolate nutcracker. I did that when I was about eight. Wow. Yeah. That was like actually my first big production after five and then I went back dancing at eight, eight to 12 and stopped then went back at 15, 14, 15. So. Well, um, I just have something to say about the chocolate nutcracker. Um, my daughter, she's now, she'll be 38 in December. And when she was 14, the chocolate nutcracker came out and I said, we went to see, because she was born on December 23rd, we mm. always look, went to see the traditional. Yeah. So when the chocolate nutcracker came out, I said, we're going to see, she cried, mm. she cried. She wanted to go see, I said, look, I know it's your birthday, but you're going to see the 
chocolate nutcracker mm -hmm. like that. Because I know she didn't know what she didn't know. Right, right. And sometimes we have to step in there and say, okay, you don't want to see it because you don't know. Exactly. When she did, she was like, Oh, she was blown away. Didn't want to go to see the regular yeah. Nutcracker again. So for her 16th birthday, her um, aunt, Paulette Johnson in Florida, I flew her. Mm -hmm. She choreographed it in Florida to see the Chocolate Nutcracker oh. for her 16th birthday. She's been like, um, and she was a dancer too when she was in college. Mm -hmm. So that's so funny that you did it. So let's see, she's 38. Yeah, so that have been about the time she was 16, you were probably eight. Yeah. I went. I did the chocolate nutcracker from 1998 to I think 2011. See, okay. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. see. Debbie <laughs> Allen uh, was choreographing it um, when she saw it the first time, and then when she went to Florida, it was her aunt um, mm. Paulette cool. Johnson. Nice. So the opening music is my brother singing mm. "Never Give Up." Oh wow! You know so. Um, that he wrote specifically for my show because Bobby McFerrin let me use his music, mm. but once I started posting on YouTube, they kept pulling it down. Yeah, copyright. Yeah, even stuff. though he gave it to me and I had to go in and appeal it and I didn't want to go through that, so my brother wrote a song, nice. an original song, Never Give Up. Cool. So now that you told me what you love doing, <laughs> who was your support system? You're strong. Now, mm. when, it's, when, when anything is negative, mm. Don't mention names. You okay. can talk about the negative experience, mm. but don't bash the person. Right. When it's positive, I want you to drop name, drop yeah. them names. Okay. Yeah. So, who was your your strongest support system? My mother. Okay. Um, and her name? My mother's name was Sandra Lynn Muhammad. Was? Yes. She passed away about two years ago. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I know that's hard. Yes. Um, it was. It is. You know, but dance has kind of gotten me out of like the dark place good, that I was in good job. in teaching. Hear um, that people? Yeah. When you're working your passion, that is it'll true. bring you out of those spaces. Yeah. So find your passion. Believe it or not, in this building even, <laughs> it's something, I don't know if you want to call it a gift or a per curse. I can tell when a, I'm looking at dead people. And dead people means not physically, but when you don't know what you're supposed to do and you don't have a passion, those eyes, and I wish they could put on sunglasses. I have to learn to ignore that. Mm. But that, I'm glad you said that, that the, your passion kept you going. You yeah. are alive when you're mm. working your gift. Yes. Okay. I agree. Yeah. So, so your mother and who else? My mom and my dad. You know, my dad was like, he was the breadwinner. You know, he definitely supported. But my mother, she was the one driving me to auditions, to ballet class, to, my mother always taught us to be well-rounded. I'm the oldest of six children. Um, I'm the only girl. I'm the oldest, so. Five brothers. Oh, we both <laughs> oldest. I'm the oldest of five. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, coming we tend to be bossy family. and controlling, but anyway, I, we ain't know, saying nothing. I try nothing. not to be, <laughs> it's, but it's, it's just like the no, big sister in no, me. You know? it, it, it is birth order. It has a lot to do with birth it. Birth order. I agree. Mm -hmm. And as she always taught us to be well rounded. I mean, I was blessed to go to a performing arts school at a young age. You know, we did tap, acting. Um, voice, ballet, everything. So I grew up with this sense of, you know what, my mom was like, be well rounded, don't just have your foot in one thing, you know, Thank you. be able to, you know, experience and explore all of the gifts that, you know, God blessed you with. Because you never know. I'm even working on my voice now. You see? Know? See? Yeah, so see? you never know. Maybe we could do a duet. You know we did that poetry the other day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We wear the mask, right? We wear the mask. That grins and lies. It hides our cheeks. And shades our eyes. This debt we pay. To human guile. With torn and bleeding hearts. We smile. And mouth with myriad subtleties. Okay, yes. we'll, be we'll be right be back with right more. Back. Okay.
we're probably going to have a part two because she has so much to share. We already talked about her support system, and I know throughout this interview, she's going to have more people. She's going to drop names, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to drop those names. But right now, your motivation in to keep going, because I know you didn't make a lot of money at first mm -hmm. in it. You were doing it for the love of it mm -hmm. and to stay alive, mm -hmm. which is more important, because you got to yeah. stay alive to get paid. Right. So your inner motivation, um, what was that that kept you going even through the hard times? Trying to get closer to God. Yes. You know, because when you it. experience a loss that's so close you know, it's my mom. I went through depression. I went through all this stuff, and I withdrew myself from dance, mm -hmm. from art, just to be kind of a recluse. And it took me a minute. It took me a while to kind of just step out. And mm -hmm. you know what? I have a support system. Let me go back to class. Let me start teaching again. Mm -hmm. Let me reach out to the people that helped me, you know, throughout my journey. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it's it's definitely healing to get back into the studio and to teach and to see the little kids that I'm teaching and to see them, you know, their, their, their improvements and their progress. So and where do you teach? I teach at Lula Washington Dance Theater. Ah, I should have known. Hello, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> I should have known that. Yeah. Um, so, so Lula Washington, uh, I, uh, Lula, Subi, I know you met Subi's yes, daughter yes, and, yes. and granddaughter, yeah. and she performs with you. But um, I've known Subi for the longest, and she is still the same, and you could tell she's working in her gift. Yeah. You could absolutely tell. Mm -hmm. And the fruit didn't fall too far from the tree because the daughter, and the granddaughter. Yeah. They're her spitting image. Mm -hmm. I mean, goodness. Mm -hmm. So investing back, that's the most important part. He gives you this gift to leave this place better than you found it. Amen. And that's the invest, the eye and smile. Mm -hmm. How do you give back to leave this world smiling, to leave this world better? I try to be a better person. You know, if I'm dealing with something, I try not to get the energy and give the energy to my students. Um, Giving back like, Charity? Do you do Charity. free stuff? Do you go out and talk to the homeless? Do you, well, you know, what do you do as far with your dance that that, that you're giving, but you're investing? Uh, I would say teaching. I okay. mean, I freelance teach as well. Okay, um, good. That's that's what I I'm talking write. about. I write. Okay. Uh, it, I'm still finding that, honestly, to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. Like right now, my giving back in this stage is is teaching. Yes. Um, but I also plan on like writing more because I write poetry. Okay. I kind of keep it to myself, but I plan on like you know sharing it with the world very soon. Uh, do you know a piece off the top that you can uh, share? My poems are really lengthy, so oh, okay. <laughs> I really need to like look in my phone. Just a little <laughs> snippet. Um. Uh, who can give love, for his love will comfort me like a soft blanket on a warm bed, reassuring that that one is there for me. Okay. See, like now, now, now check this out. Okay. You give a gift, mm. and the camera people here give a gift yeah. every day when they smile. Mm -hmm. Smiling even to yourself in the mirror yeah. releases endorphins. Now check this out. Mm. When somebody says you have a beautiful smile, mm -hmm. Your response would typically be what? Thank you very much. But you should say you're welcome. You're welcome. Because you gave them a gift. Mm. Amen. And I would say thank you, and you would say? You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. See? <laughs> so I think we get it wrong that we play smiling short. Mm -hmm. If nobody else is going to smile at you, smile at yourself in the mirror. Amen. And that responds your brain. Yeah. It responds the same way. Yeah. You hug yourself. All the time. You gotta hug yourself. Yes, you do. 26 second hug, 26 seconds washing your hands under the water, you know, and then you drink your water. I mean, he gives us everything we need. Mm -hmm. Vitamin D3 when we go outside mm -hmm. and get the pure sun. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Water. Water. You need to drink half your body weight. You 12 pounds to so six ounces. <laughs> I try to drink at least I, a gallon I need to a drink day. 150 <laughs> ounces. No, you drink half your body weight in ounces. Okay. So a 300 pound man would not survive on those 64 ounces of water. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He would have to drink 150 ounces of water. Yeah. You would probably have to drink, oh, uh, that's 110 pounds. I strive to drink a gallon a day. Yeah, so yeah. that's about it. You're probably 100 pounds wet, so <laughs> anyway. That's a teacup for me. I have to go, woo, drown in my water. But um, so with the, with the love of self, mm -hmm. I know you have that, but did you always have it, even as a teenager? Did you, did you love that agape love for yourself and for others, or did you? I had to grow into it. Okay. 
I tell it, tell it, it, tell people out there that it just doesn't, sometimes it doesn't just. It, it self-love doesn't happen overnight. It's kind of like you have to be your own therapist in some cases and self-love, I'm, I'm still in the process of building myself up, you know, and mm -hmm. I have to give myself positive affirmations, give yourself compliments. No one's going to build you up but you and no one's going to love you the way you need to be loved but you. And that's something that I'm learning, you know, in this, in this moment in time, in this stage. Yeah. You know what? Uh, where my makeup? <laughs> <laughs> this is why I like to have youth host on because once you get this gray hair, this I Google it. That old lady don't know nothing. You know what would Google do? I use what would Google do for my thesis because now they're not listening to the elders. So when it's coming from a young person. It's received. Hmm. And that coming from her touched my soul. Hmm. So listen, you have to love yourself. Hmm. Don't let these people out here, especially other races, you're a monkey in this, can I see your tail and blah, 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 you got bad hair and good, no. Love yourself yeah. and know that you are not a mistake no matter how you got here. Right. You're not a mistake, you're here to share your smile and your purpose. Amen. Your education, you told part of it with the dance, but as far as your education is concerned, I learned from the School of Hard Knocks most of my life. Mm. And then went on to get my master's, working on my doctorate. But your schooling and your education, mm. whether it's in an institution or mm. in the street, what is your foundation for education? So when I graduated high school, I was still... Which high school? I was homeschooled, City of Angels Independent Study, and it worked out because I was touring, okay, you know, in, the, in Lula's Dance Company from 16 to, you know, you know, during my high school years. Mm -hmm. So I graduated from City of Angels Independent Study, and because I was still busy and active in, in LA and the, dance com and the dance community, I didn't want to go away for college, so my mom was like, just go to get, get your degree in massage therapy. So I got my degree in massage therapy, got my associate, so, I'm sorry, excuse me, associate of science degree in sports rehab and massage, massage therapy. I ended sports. up going- Sports? Sports rehabilitation okay. and massage therapy. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up getting my bachelor's degree in business uh, online. So good I'm like, job. I need to get something, you know what I mean? Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Good, Thank good. You. And of course, your dance was Lula mm -hmm. and um, touring there. Now, I knew, I know one of your, um, you danced with Christopher Nolan. Yes, yes, He's yes. going to be, start being a guest host here because I want young people to speak to other young people. Yeah. Um, what, how, did you meet him and did you meet dancing together or? I was already dancing when I met Chris. So I met Christopher Nolan. <laughs> and you gotta laugh talking about <laughs> yes. Christopher Nolan. Oh, well, he is a comedian also, right? He you really gotta put is that like down. my brother in dance. I remember being like 16, 17 in his room, Chris, Chris, on tour, just annoying the hell out of everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the relationship that I have with Chris, we've been on tour, we've cried and laughed and danced and sweat together, but mm -hmm. um, I met Chris when he, Lula flew him in to be a guest um, artist with the company and we just kind of just clicked. He's been my dance partner. We have many crazy stories on tour, mm -hmm. being on stage, people's costume flying out, Chris has to lift me, you know, my hair extension falls out. We have stories, child. Uh -oh. but <laughs> we have stories. Oh God. And when you do live, <laughs> it's nothing more rewarding to dance in front of a live. Yeah. And see, Thank you, Vertrice Nolan, for giving me permission to be his other mother. Oh, you know, I just love that, you know, being the oldest child and controlling and bossy and stuff like that. I love to have children to kind of like, yeah. girl, pull that dress up. Girl, <laughs> I, you ain't going out the house looking like that. I love that. I just love it. I yeah. just love it. But um, so, so that is really good to have a partner and a friendship in mm -hmm. that and something that you do. And so I really, 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 really admire you, your Thank mother, you. may she rest in heaven. Thank you. And um, keep on, that's how you keep her alive. Yes. That's how you keep, you know, your legacy. People don't know, just like oral tradition. I wanted to get to this, I really do. Mm -hmm. I may do this on another segment. And this kente cloth, I've had mm -hmm. this since 96, but this is a Ghanaian. I did not know it at the time that it's, it's exclusive to Ghanaian. And this mud cloth is not, is from pretty much Mali. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Molly and um, the different symbols they have on there like um, I love cowrie shells and that's mm. fertility mm. you see what it look like don't you <laughs> okay so that's for fertility and then yeah. there's other one that's God is omnipotent mm -hmm. here I have earrings like that um, people I want you to to know this look at what you have on today see I ain't tell you go put some on look at what you have on now if somebody met you for the first time that's the impression they have before you open your mouth. A lot of times, I did do what I want, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you have on, first impression. Now, there's a, um, um, a, 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 what's his name? Once they get to know you, they'll say that you're not about your outfit. Mm. But just think somebody, you know, the walk in, and I, uh, my children, <laughs> They were mad at me. I think they almost hated me. Mm. I never let them wear logos. Mm. I said, if you gonna wear somebody's logo on the outside, mm -hmm. they better be paying you because that's a billboard. Right, that is true. You advertising for them, they're writing it off as advertising and they're charging you more for it? Mm -hmm. Oh, when you make your own money, get your logos. Hello. But when I'm, unless they're gonna pay me some royalties, yeah. I'm not buying logos for right. you. Now you know you have it. I wear Jones, New York. I wear this. I wear stuff that fits my body type. But I'm not gonna advertise them unless they're gonna pay me. Don't they pay you for commercials? They should. Help. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I don't think nobody caught on to that. <laughs> they wear this big old stuff on here. Yeah. Can't even afford to get a job, and they advertise for them and tell you to pay more for it. Mm. Mm -mm. Think about it. Yeah. Now I will wear a, a t-shirt smile. I'll wear something that promotes something that I believe in. Yeah but I'm not gonna advertise for somebody that's not paying me. Mm -hmm. And this is a big billboard, you see this? <laughs> They've got a lot of room. So, um, so, so what I wanna say is people, watch what you wear. Uh, a true story, somebody had on a shirt that said spoiled brat. On the shirt. I didn't know her. I said, hi spoiled brat. Why are you calling me? I said, well you got it on your shirt. Right. <laughs> Why are you wearing it if you don't want me to call you that? I call you what's on your shirt. If you have B with a niche on there, I say, hi, B with a niche. Why are you gonna call me? You got it on your shirt. Exactly. You called yourself that, but you don't want me to call you that? So you wear what you want to be called yeah. or seen as. And that is one of my, my thing. I look homeless half the time. So they, wait, I was up there. No, seriously. I was, I was at this, this restaurant up there on Arroyo. And sometime I walk my dog like five and six in the morning and it's dark. And when I go out without my makeup, I put my head down like this and I'm hunched over and I'm eating. Do you know somebody came to give me their French fries? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like ma'am? <laughs> yeah. You hungry? Cause I was feeding Coco, I'll do it like so this. Funny. Feeding my dog and stuff. So they thought I was homeless. Hmm. So I said, wow, that really solidifies what first impressions you never okay. get a second chance to make a first impression that's true so that's very true. anyway on that I want you to speak to your camera mm -hmm. and I want you to give any words of wisdom we can pick back up but I don't want to miss out on your words of wisdom to your younger self mm -hmm. to somebody out there that you think needs to hear it give them your words of wisdom Haniata here is words of wisdom don't compare your success don't ah. compare where you are in life to anyone else if you need to take a break from Instagram, <laughs> do it. Because what I realize is when I don't practice gratitude and I'm looking at what everyone else is doing, I miss the blessing. Mm -hmm. And God's like, well, mm -hmm. your heart's not right because mm -hmm. you're looking at this other person. So stay in your lane, you know. And something that I just recently wrote down, you know, your light shines brighter in your own lane. You know, God's going to bless you more when you are authentically yourself. That's my words of advice. And <laughs> she made me think of this, and I've taught this to my children when they were younger. Your life is the only Bible Amen. that some people may ever read. Even when you're not aware, you're always planting seed. Mm. Because people of the world have got their eyes on you yeah. to see if what you preach is what you do. So let your light so shine Amen. before men so they may see your good works, good works and the seeds that you have planted will surely be raised up and together you are glorify the Lord, Lord. your creator, Amen. whoever that is. You were born here to shed light. You were born here to share your smile because if you're not sharing your smile and working your purpose, what is your purpose? Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to get old like, I don't want to be old like her, 
the only way you ain't gonna get old is to die young. So if you live long enough, you're gonna have gray hairs and be old. So have some wisdom and stuff to impart. So with that, do you have anything coming up? How do people reach you as far as maybe going out and showcasing or teaching or anything? Kind of look in your camera, you have Instagram. My Instagram is Smile Skunk. <laughs> I don't know how to use it. Y'all could teach me. Smile Skunk. Skunk was my name I've had since 1989. I, that's a whole nother show to tell you how I got that one. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But anyway, Smile Skunk. And then um, you can always tune in to PasadenaMedia.tv on Saturdays, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And YouTube, Deborah, don't tell anybody I told you my first name, Smile Lady Johnson. Okay, so where can they reach you? Well, my social media platform that I'm most active in is Instagram. It's N-I-A-T-M, so it's Nia T-M. I'm also on Facebook, but I'm mainly on Instagram. I try to just update it and like not look at it because I can be scrolling for hours uh, and waste time and not be productive. Oh, like somebody else is <laughs> on every day, but they're on that little tweet, tweet, Right. Tweet. So right now, my social media platform that I actively use, and I will respond if you message, it's N-I-A-T-M, Hania Tahira, Instagram, N-I-A-T-M. Okay. Now, you know what Nia means. Purpose. That's it. Yeah, Hania is Nia. Well, Nia is Hania. Yeah, for but short. see, Nia, you're yeah. living up to your name. Amen. You're working your purpose. Yeah. And um, that's one of my favorite days during Kwanzaa, Nia, mm. you know, and Kaumba, mm -hmm. you know, the creativity. So you kind of pretty much put all of those together, mm. you know, and it takes a village. It takes a village not only to raise a child, to raise a mother, mm -hmm. to build a company. Yeah. People think, and they were brainwashed us to think we didn't need each other. They right. tried to keep us separated. And to this True. day, we have that underlying yeah. thing, competing instead of collaborating. Yes, that's true. You know, the barter system. I, okay, I can use your talent. You could use my talent. Mm -hmm. We don't use that. No, it's mine. She may get credit for what I, what I did if I help her. Mm -hmm. Like your talent is more valuable than my talent. Right. Uh -uh, that come, tell me, I bet you can't drive that little new Mercedes without wheels. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> you need the person that made the wheels. Hello, <laughs> and what about the planes that crashed because that little screw nut didn't mm. fit and it just blew up? Yeah, come on now, we play other people's things. Start so, anyway. I am Nia. Um, can I call you Nia? You can call me Nia. Yeah. Okay. I love Nia. <laughs> I love purpose. So Nia, I know I'm putting our blast on TV. Okay. It's almost like proposing and they say no on air. <laughs> She's going to be one of my future guest hosts awesome. while I'm traveling in Africa. And we're going to Skype together because I believe the youth, you know, Martin Luther King was 26 when he ran that boycott. Mm. Rosa Parks was 42. And I have a daughter, 50. Mm. So, you know, these weren't old people that did these movements. Yeah. So see you later. And Aletha J, my cousin, you are the best director in the world. And this crew, you're going to see them. Stay tuned to the rolling credits. Everybody that worked on this show is fabulous. You are fabulous. Thank Not you so only much. beautiful. Thank you. See, Africans are beautiful. We ain't running around <laughs> with no spears and stuff like that. You know, I'm, come on now. Right. We're talented. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. much. I'm honored. I've been honored I to host. Am. Yeah. Oh. <laughs>